Good evening, Titans. This is Mr. Simpson, and welcome back from a great spring break, and uh, be ready to finish the year strong here. We're going to begin Chapter 9, and uh, Chapter 9 will start off with learning how to simplify radicals and do some things with radicals. So uh, let's just get after it. All right, the first core concept says the product property of square roots. All right, and in words, the square root of a product equals the product of square roots of the factors. So if you look at the square root of the numbers 9 times 5 can be broken up into the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. But since the square root of 9 is a perfect square, which is the whole number 3, I can rewrite that as 3 times the square root of 5. And so in algebra, it's just the square root of a times b can be broken up into the square root of a times the square root of b. Again, where a and b are both greater than or equal to zero because, again, we're doing square roots, and we can only take the square root of positive numbers. So now let's see how we can apply this property to simplifying radicals. So here's the first example. And if we do it the way the book shows this, I would look at 24, and I would think of what two numbers can I break up 24 into that one of those numbers is a perfect square. And so even if I look at my factor sheet, I have 1 and 24. Well, neither of those are perfect squares. I have 2 and 12, and neither one of those are perfect squares. I have 4 and 6. 4 is a perfect square, and I have 3 and 8. Well, if I look, the only one that's a perfect square is the number 4. So I could break up the square root of 24 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. And then the square root of 4 is the whole number 2, so this actually simplifies to 2 times the square root of 6, all right? And so that's the simplest form of the square root of 24. And now we're going to show you a different way that we would do this problem, and this will probably be the way that most of you will end up doing this type of problem using a factor tree. So if we look at this first problem here, we're going to do the factor tree. And so today in class, we did some things with factor tree. So 24 is 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. And 6 is 2 times 3. And so we rewrite this as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And as we learned in class today, if we take a pair, then the square root of this actually becomes 2 squared that becomes one number on the outside. So that becomes two, and the two don't pair together, have to stay inside, and we multiply them, and that becomes two times the square root of six, which is just what we got on the previous example. So now let's look at a couple more here. If we look at this one, first of all, the negative out in front just means that my final answer will be negative. It does not affect when I do my factor tree. Now, I always start out with 2 and 40, and then this would be 2 and 20, 2 and 10, and 2 and 5. And notice how each of these numbers are prime factors. So then I rewrite it as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And since we're doing the square root, I look for pairs. So there's a pair and there's a pair. So one pair comes out as a single number on the outside. Another pair comes out as another single 2 on the outside, and then the 5 must stay underneath. So then my final answer is 4 times the square root of 5, but I can't forget about the negative out in front, so this becomes negative 4 radical 5. Now we're going to look at a few, a couple examples with variables. So we look at this, this is the square root of 49 times the square root of of 4, at least that's what we're going to call it, not sure what it is, square root of 49 times x to the fourth. And so we look at this, I'm going to do the factor tree, and 49 is 7 times 7, so I'm going to go 7 times 7, and then x times x times x times x, because x to the fourth means x is a factor four times. So there's a pair, there's a pair, and there's a pair. So a 7 comes out, one x comes out, and another x comes out. There's nothing left underneath, so my final answer is 7x squared. And that's my final answer. 
And now we'll look at this last example. So again, I break it up. I do the 75, and this is 3 times 25, and then that's 5 times 5. And then this is n to the fifth. So well, underneath my radical, now I have 3 times 5 times 5 times n times n times n times n times n. Again, because we're doing the square root, I look for pairs of identical factors. So remember the pairs come out to be 1 on the outside, so I have 5 n to the second, because I'm going to have two of those go out there. And then underneath my radical, I'm going to have 3 n. And now that's my final answer. So now we're going to do this with the quotient property of square roots. And so again, the square root of 3 fourths is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. And then the square root of 4 over is a perfect square, so my answer is the square root of 3 all over the whole number 2. And you can see what it looks like in algebra as well. So in this first problem, I'm just going to break this up into the square root of 23 over the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 23 is a prime number, so that's just the square root of 23 all over the whole number 3. And there's my final answer. Again, one of the rules for radicals is that we can never have a radical in the denominator of a fraction. Since the square root of 9 is a perfect square, that takes away the radical. Now again, just like the previous problem where there's a negative on the outside, it doesn't affect anything we do. We just know that our final answer is going to be negative. So this is the opposite of the square root of 17 over the square root of 100. And again, the square root of 100 is a perfect square. The square root of 17 can't be broke down any. So it's a square root of negative, the square root of 17 all over the whole number 10. Done. We look at example 7. We're going to rewrite this as the square root of 36 over the square root of z squared. Square root of 36 is the whole number 6. And the square root of z squared, well, again, if this is z times z, and it's the square root of that, and there's my pair, I have just a z underneath my radical. So there's my final answer. All right? And the last example. We're going to break this up into the square root of 4x squared on top all over the square root of 64. Now the square root of 4x squared, well the square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of x squared is x. The square root of 64 is 8, but now I can reduce this because 2 and 8 can be reduced into 1 and 4, so my final answer is x all over 4. And there's my final answer. Alright, and the last thing we're going to do is just do this with cube roots. And so the only difference with cube roots than square roots is that instead of looking for pairs, we're going to look for triples. So we're still going to do the factor tree. So 54 is 6 times 9. 6 is 2 times 3. And 9 is 3 times 3. So I have the cube root of 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Again, because it's the cube root, I'm looking for triples. So one number comes on the outside. So a 3 with the cube root of 2 left over underneath. Same thing occurs when we're doing it with variables. So again, 16 is 2 and 8. 8 is 2 and 4. And 4 is 2 and 2. So then underneath, I have the cube root of, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x times x. Again, there's a triple, there's a triple. So I have a 2 go on the outside, I have an x go on the outside, and then underneath my cube root, I have a 2 and an x left. So there's my final answer. All right? And now let's look at the dividing. So on this first one here, we have the cube root of a over the negative 27. So again, that's the same as the cube root of a over the cube root of a negative 27. And the cube root of a can change because there's no triples. But 27 is 3 times 9 is 3 times 3. So there's 3. And again, it's negative. 
So it'd have to be a negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So the cube root of a negative 27 is a negative 3. And there's my final answer. All right, and the last example. Now we've been doing quite a few examples. Hopefully you're getting all these in your notes. They should be very helpful. So I'm going to break it up right away into the cube root of 25c to the 7th, d to the 3rd, all over the cube root of 64. Well, I'm going to do the factor tree first. So the top is 5 times 5, and then c, 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 c. And I have a d and a d and a d. And again, that's all underneath the cube root. All underneath the cube root of, and this is 2 times 32, 2 times 16, 2 times 8, 2 times 4, and 2 times 2. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And now we look for triples. So again, there's a triple, there's a triple, and there's a triple. So on the top, I'm going to have C to the second D times a cube root of 25C all over, there's a triple, and there's a triple, so that's a 2 and another 2, so that's a 4 on the outside. So there's my final answer. All right? So again, it's just using the factor tree and then trying to find either pairs or triples, depending on if you're doing the square root or the cube root. Now, use these examples and turn your journal to page 279 and try to complete problems 1, 4, 5, and 10, and we'll check these tomorrow in class. Again, welcome back, and let's finish the year strong.